What's up, everybody? Welcome into the Next Pats podcast. I'm Phil Perry coming at you from Indianapolis from the NFL scouting combine. Lots to get to in a relatively brief pod. Okay, we're going to try to hit you with as many as we can from the combine here. We've got a load of people that we're going to talk to who are incredibly bright that are going to help us when it comes to understanding what's going on in free agency. Of course, the draft, the quarterback position in particular. We're also going to hammer some of the other positions that we haven't hit quite as hard. Okay, receiver tackle all these spots that i know you all listening to this podcast are interested in but today we're going to be focused on elliot wolf elliot wolf is the de facto general manager for the patriots right now his title is still director of scouting which he was able to tell us today he had his media availability podium session this morning we're recording this on tuesday morning Uh, he just finished up uh, about a half hour ago Uh, there was a lot there he is in terms of his delivery Is he the most electric guy you've ever heard? Is he Dan Campbell or Bill Parcells? No, Uh, but he is, for a team that is accustomed to not sharing much, pretty comfortable with sharing. And we appreciate that, of course, here on the Next Pats podcast. So what we're going to play for you here today on the pod is his back and forth with reporters. It included some national reporters. So you might hear a question mixed in about how the Patriots can take down the bills and the division and Uh, A lot of Green Bay related things, which I actually found pretty interesting because it gives us a sense for Elliot Wolf's background and why he feels the way he feels, why his football philosophies are his football philosophies. But we're going to play for you the entirety of that back and forth with the larger group of reporters at the podium here in Indy. And then he did a separate side session with local reporters where we were able to continue to poke and prod. Uh, and ask him a handful of questions that I thought were pertinent and that I was hoping to squeeze off at the podium, and we had a little bit of extra time. So uh, it was great to catch up with him for a few extra minutes. So we'll play that for you as well. I just want to lead off with a with a quick overarching thought, a couple that I'll hit you with uh, that I think are particularly relevant here for next pads. Uh, number one, you're going to hear there continue to be a differentiation between the new Patriots regime and the old one. Under Bill Belichick, you're going to hear Elliot Wolf talk about how uh, he's going to be focused on playing young players and developing from within. That's something that he hopes to do that, uh, in his opinion, will be different from the previous regime. You're going to hear him talk about culture and being open and treating people the right way. And it's really interesting to hear someone who has worked under Bill Belichick and had a good relationship with Bill Belichick. Um may still have a good relationship with Bill Belichick. That might actually have been a relevant question to ask him (laughs) next time. But interesting to hear him describe the way things are working in the building right now, obviously very new into this regime and how they worked previously with Bill Belichick. Also interesting to hear because we have gone over this and over it and over it again this time of year, the last several years, the Patriots grading system under Bill Belichick. And we've done complete podcast episodes where for 20 minutes I'll break down for you what a Patriots grade would look like and what the numbers mean and what the lowercase letters and the capital letters and the color coding and all that goes into one little card next to a player's name on their draft board. There's a lot of information compiled into those cards. And if you're not accustomed to seeing players graded that way, my guess is for scouts, it could be pretty complicated. They've changed that. They're into a new grading system now. It's going to be closer to what Elliot Wolf and Alonzo Highsmith, now part of this Patriots front office as well, senior personnel executive, uh, are used to dealing, we're used to dealing with in Green Bay. So you're going to have the Packer way here in New England from a front office standpoint. So new grading system that um, you'll hear Elliot describe as something that uh, will be a little bit simpler, he hopes, for scouts to understand. It won't necessarily be as role specific as things were here in New England. I think this is me putting words in his mouth now, but I I think he's hoping it will help the Patriots better determine simply who the best players are, not who the best fits for certain roles are. And those are two different things. And then if you determine who the best players are and you're able to draft a few of those, well, then you can mold your system and you can mold your roles to their skill sets. It sounds like based on Elliot's description that, that process was a little bit reversed under Bill Belichick. 
for a long time here. So it'll be interesting to see just how well the scouts in New England adapt to that system and what kind of results it leads to when it comes to drafting and, and free agency, I'm sure, is a, is a similar deal for Elliot Wolf in this front office. They, they, it sounds like, are going to be more focused on getting the best players and then going from there when it comes to their scheme and their systems. All right, so here's the full back and forth with Elliot Wolf, with the national media. You're going to hear about the Packer way. You're going to hear about the grading system. You're going to hear about culture. It's all here right now. Have at it. Can you just take us through the process of how you wound up here and you know being in the position now that you are? Yeah, uh, you know, thanks for the question. I think uh, I want to thank Robert and Jonathan Kraft for this tremendous opportunity that's been bestowed upon me. Um, you know, continue to work together with Gerard Mayo. It's been really exciting so far. And Matt Groh, Richard Miller, all the people that kind of make the Patriots go behind the scenes over the years. And uh, it's a, it's going to be a lot of work. And we're really excited to kind of get going here and um, try to help improve the team and get us back to respectability. What's your title, Elliot? Uh, my title is Director of Scouting. Hey, Elliot, what did your time in Green Bay mean to you to help you get here? Yeah, my time in Green Bay meant everything. Um, it's where uh, I learned my foundation of scouting, leadership, how to treat people, how to deal with people, uh, really just everything in terms of the business of football. Um, and it's prepared me for this moment to, to help the New England Patriots get back to where we need to go. Hey, Elliot, uh, you know, when you look back at your time with the Packers, you watch a ton of film and you were, you know, kind of the founding guy for Greg Jennings, Devontae Adams. I'm curious to hear, you know, your thoughts on Marvin Harrison. When you watch his film, what's the first thing that pops out about his film? Yeah, well, uh, those players that you mentioned that we had with Green Bay, uh, it wasn't me, it was a collaborative effort. Um, and we were we were really excited to get those guys. And they've obviously, you know, Greg was a great player and Devontae continues to, you know, break records and, and eventually he'll be getting the gold jacket. Um, uh, thanks for the question about Marvin. Like, he's a good player. Um, obviously, there's a lot of strengths to his game and um, he can translate into any offense in the NFL. Hey, Elliot, the, the Bills have won several division titles in a row. When you look at them and, and, and trying to compete with them, what stands out about the way Brandon has built that team? Yeah, uh, Brandon Bean's done a great job with those guys. Um, you know, they obviously have Josh Allen. They have tremendous weapons on offense. They have a, a really good defensive scheme. And, uh, you know, we'll be able to compete with them as we move forward here. Um, you know, the, they've done a great job drafting, and that's something that, that we're going to continue to try to do. Elliot, you've got, you've got yeah. Mac Jones and Bailey Zabby on our contract and the number three pick. Um, where are you guys in deciding what you're going to do in quarterback moving forward? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd say there's a lot of options on the table. Um, uh, I'm glad you asked about Mac and Bailey. Um, we're not, we're not going to be a program that's talking about these guys in terms of, uh, you know, through the media. We're gonna, we're gonna do what's best for the team behind the scenes, and and uh, the strategy of that is gonna be uh, myself, Gerard Mayo, Macro, and we're gonna try to. Uh, try to do the right thing for for the team. Elliot, there's a report that Michael Wenyu has uh, fired his agent. Does that concern you at all? How does that impact you guys moving forward when it comes to uh, dealing with it? it? It doesn't impact us. Mike's a core player for us. That that you know, it's no secret we want to try to keep Mike, um, and it'll just be a little bit of a wrinkle dealing with him. Uh, Mike's really smart and he's introspective and he's thoughtful, and he understands. You know, he knows what he wants, which is always good when you're dealing with a player. Um, and, and he's certainly someone that you know, we, we view as a cornerstone for us. Elliot, what do you think of the quarterbacks in this year's class from what you've seen, and are any of them worthy of the number three overall pick? I think it's a really good year for quarterbacks. Um, it's a really good year at a lot of positions. Uh, like any position, we're going we're gonna to evaluate their strengths and weaknesses, determine who fits for us. We're pretty early in the process here. Like I haven't met any of these guys. Gerard hasn't met any of these guys. So you know, as we continue through the process here, we'll, we'll determine um, what's best for the team. and. You know, one thing uh, about the quarterbacks in this draft specifically that, that I'm excited about is they're, they all look like they're really tough guys, which, you know, is obviously great at any position, but the quarterback position especially. How do you try to gauge mental toughness? You could probably see toughness on the film in some ways, but how do you try to gauge that, and how important is this week to trying to figure that out? Um, I don't know how important this week is for that specifically, but I think it's about talking to the right people and asking the right questions. And when we meet with them, asking the right questions. And that may be here in a formal interview. That may be, you know, at a later date at the pro day or, or wherever that may be. But we, we have to determine, you know, who, who can handle being the quarterback of the New England Patriots. You get to know a new staff of assistant coaches. How do you sort through and learn which of them are, are good scouts and which maybe aren't as good? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think I think the key is just having open and honest meetings and dialogue. Um, 
we had a, a series of meetings last week that were tremendous for us as we all got on the same page in terms of you know, what our team needs are. And I was actually really encouraged by everybody willing to just say their opinion, even if it was different from the previous person. So, you know, having those open, honest meetings and, and working together to determine the best outcome is, is definitely what's important. Have what you found in the past, like, you know this guy's particularly good at this, you know that guy's maybe not great at that and applied it accordingly? Yeah, yeah of course. Um, you know, I, th I think part of being in a leadership position is understanding the strengths and weaknesses of everybody in the building and and that includes myself like I have strengths I have weaknesses and it's important to be able to supplement you know your team with with people who can you know feed off of each other when you're evaluating quarterbacks what what attributes do you value the most uh, good question um, you know first of all being a being someone that can elevate his teammates someone that your teammates want to play for I think that's an extremely underrated thing that people don't really talk about that much um, leadership's important, and obviously, you know, physical talent. We wouldn't be talking about these guys if they weren't physically talented. How much emphasis do you place on body language? And have you ever thought about using like outside agencies to, you know, evaluate the quarterbacks? Uh, body language on the field is very important at that position. You know, you don't want a guy that's throwing his hands up after a bad play, or you can you can see him physically, you know, pointing at somebody, or you know, body language is important. Everybody's looking to the quarterback. Um, and as far as outside agencies, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that. Like how they have personality tests and, and to see like how this personality matches with others, those types of things. Yeah, I mean, we have, we have a lot of tests that we use and resources like that. Um, I don't know if there's one specific to body language that we utilize. What do you anticipate using the franchise tag either on Mike or Kyle? Uh, I would say that all the, all the options are on the table. Um, we definitely want to keep Mike and Kyle, and you know we're hopeful to continue to work with with Kyle's agent and Mike to uh, to make that happen. Well, I would say your roster building philosophy and system that you want to implement will differ from the system you've been a part of the last four years. I'm sorry, can you say that again? Just your roster building philosophy and system, how will that you know show itself as being most different from the system you were a part of the last four years? Yeah, I think there's, there's going to be a little bit more reliance on playing young players. I think it's really important in today's football to be able to play young players and develop from within. When you have you are you open to possibly trading the number three pick? And have you fielded any calls uh, in that light? Yeah, I would say all, all options are on the table, and we haven't heard anything specifically. When it comes to chain of command, Elliot, as you understand it, who is responsible when it comes to that number three pick? Who ultimately makes the call? Uh, it's going to be a collaborative effort. Coach Mayo, myself, Macro, the whole staff. Um, at the end of the day, somebody has to has to make that pick, and, and that'll be myself. Elliot, you mentioned some of the traits and quarterbacks that are important to you. We're coming off the Super Bowl where one team found their quarterback top of the draft, the other at the bottom. How have you changed in the way you evaluate quarterbacks or the traits that you might prioritize over the last 10 years or so? Yeah, I think uh, when you look throughout the league, that's a good question. I think when you look throughout the league, most of the quarterbacks are first-rounders. Um, I think there's exceptions to be had, like you know Dak Prescott, Brock Purdy, and Tom Brady. Um, but I think just the, the league-wide understanding of how important that position is and how important it is to have somebody there that can help you, you know, win games and get over the hump has, has changed league-wide. Why, why do you think the Packers keep getting the quarterback right? Why do I think the Packers keep getting the quarterback right? Your time there. Luck. No, I'm just <laughs> no I, I, think, uh, I think the scouting process that, you know, that I grew up with, that Brian Gutekunst continues to to em employ is, has been really good and you know they've been able fortunate enough to to you know sit sit Rodgers and sit Love for a year that and that that's been able to help them. I wouldn't say that that applies to every quarterback, but it certainly helps them. Elliot, your father was an obvious mentor for you. What are some of the lessons um, that he taught you that you still are still guiding you today? Yeah, I think uh, in terms of scouting itself, it's just kind of trust what you see and believe in it. Um, but also also really lessons about people. Um, I still believe, and, and this is great to, to be able to work with Gerard, who also believes this, this is a people business, and it's about developing people, and the culture is created from the people in your building, whether that's scouts, coaches, players, support staff, and I think that's tremendously important uh, as, as you try to build the culture that you want. Elliot, I think Gerard said you guys have cash to burn. Do you, do you plan on being aggressive in free agency? Uh, we're going to aggressively try to help the team uh, take that however you want it, but we will we will try to do what's right, whether that means 
spending or saving will TBD. I was just kind of curious, given your football life and, and who your dad was, what was your first trip to the Combine and what do you remember about it? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. So my first trip to the Combine was uh, 1993. I was 10 years old. This is my 30th Combine. Um, I've been every year except for the 2021 when they didn't have it. Um, the Combine now is so much more organized than it used to be. I mean, the workout was supposed to start at, at 10 uh, back in the 90s, and maybe it would start at 1, and everyone would be sitting in the dome the whole time. It was, it was crazy. The, there were no formal interview times. It was like a big scrum of people grabbing guys. There were scouts and coaches fighting each other because they wanted to interview somebody next. Like It, it was kind of wild. Um, but it's uh, a credit to Jeff Foster and, and the league and, and uh, NFS to, to putting this thing together. What was 10-year-old you doing here? I was, uh, I was really just kind of dipping my toes into scouting and, and watching the workouts and evaluating. Um, my dad used to sit down at the start of the 40s, and it was, it was him, Bill Parcells, and Al Davis, and I was just sitting there like soaking it all up. Like It was, it was just tremendously rewarding, and, a, and a, you know, kind of as I look back on it, it was, you know, uh, definitely a special time. Elliot, what should Patriots fans expect from an Elliot Wolf led personnel department? Like, what, what do you believe in as far as building a team? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, I think the main thing is just uh, getting players that fit our culture, um, getting players that want to do right, want to do the extra. But in terms of just physical, physical skills, uh, we need to weaponize the offense. We need to be faster and more explosive on defense and, you know, height, weight, speed. Um, playmaking ability, there'll be definitely an emphasis on those things. Elliot, what's your, what's your pitch to free agents as you guys sort of navigate this rebuilding period? Pitch to free agents? Yeah. Yeah, I would say our pitch to free agents is, you know, this is a new program and we're, we're heading in the right direction. It's a new era. We have leadership with Gerard Mayo that is going to be tremendous. Like, he's, he's just an unbelievable leader and developer of people. And I think that, you know, as we move forward with the new offense and defense, like, it's going to be it's going to be pretty special and exciting here. Elliot, what are some ways that uh, Robin Glazer has been helping out you and the football team in general? Yeah, Robin's been a good resource for everyone. Um, she continues in her role as uh, as chief legal counsel, and uh, she's been helpful uh, with some of the day to day behind the scenes things that need to get taken care of. What, what are you hoping Elliot, to? You, think, you know, you were just asked about your pitch to free agents. Questions at quarterback. The team hasn't been very good the last couple of years. Do you think you'll have to pay a tax in some ways? for free agents to encourage them to come to New England. Yeah, in some ways, but I think that's kind of free agency as a whole. Like, you know, you can teams can put their best recruiting pitch on and, you know, at the end of the day, like a lot of times they'll go to whoever's offering them the most money. So, what are you hoping to accomplish this week? Uh, well, that's a good question too. Like the the amount of information that we get here is just so tremendous. Not only the timing and testing, you know, the measurements, the body types. The, the jumps and all those things, but we get all the medical information. We get to meet with 45 guys formally and uh, countless others informally, um, talking to agents, getting information, talking to, play, to, to front office people and other teams and scouts, and just the amount of information that we can accumulate in a week is awesome. And, and it's really a credit to the city of Indianapolis, the way this thing's set up too, because everything is like right here. And so, you know, it was 70 degrees out yesterday, but there's no need to go outside here because everything's just kind of connected. But no, it's 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 a it's still a, a really great resource for us. Elliot, with the cap space that you guys have in the third overall pick, how involved do you anticipate ownership will be in making some of these big decisions for you guys this off season? Yeah, I mean they 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 prefer to stay out of football, but um, they're they've been very supportive of Gerard and, and myself and and Matt and you know it, anything we need we've got in, in a lot of ways. So um, I think they have opinions which they'll share, but. Ultimately, it's it's down to Gerard and I. Elliot, have you guys changed? Have you and Alonzo changed the grading system and that you guys are using? I mean, why are you doing that? What do you think the advantages are? Yeah, so uh, we, we changed the grading system. It's a little bit uh, more similar to what we did in Green Bay. Um, the the previous Patriot system was more. This is what the role is, and this is more kind of value based. So I think it it makes it a lot easier for scouts to rate guys and, and put them in a stack of like this guy's the best this guy's the worst and and everything in between falls into place rather than sort of more nuanced approaches i, I just think it makes it, it it accounts value better and it also makes it easier for the scouts in the fall as well as in the spring to determine where guys will get drafted does alonzo have a title uh senior personnel executive so just to clarify the new system won't be as role specific 
like all receivers will be will be sort of ranked together. All you know, running backs will be ranked together, even if the roles might end up being different. Yeah, in in a sense, I mean, we'll still have slot receivers and perimeter receivers, things like that. It's to me, it's a little bit less about the grading scale and more about the process that we're going that we've put in place. Um, this process is 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 a lot more collaborative. We hear from the scouts more. We're going to be able to uh, determine, you know, together, like what's the best thing for the team at the at the end of the day. How labor intensive is that to change a grading system for an entire organization? Uh, you know, it, it's actually been really encouraging. The scouts have been really open to it, and they're trying. And you know, some guys have been here for 20 years with the old system. So, again, I, I think it's again, le it's it's to, for me, it's a lot less about the grading scale and more about the process of of determining you know, who the best player for the Patriots is. Elliot, how big was the influence was Ted and some of those other guys that you worked with in Green Bay? I know it's obviously a heck of a front office that's no longer there. Yeah, the front office I worked with in Green Bay was phenomenal. I mean, just when I look back at those times, like the amount of guys that have gone on to great success in this league, and Ted was the forefront of that. Ted was so humble and and so introspective, and just taking a lot of, a lot of things from him uh, will help me as I move forward in my career. How would you define the Packer way? I'm sorry? How would you define the Packer way? It's something we've heard about the, over the course of the last month or so, but what is that to you? Yeah, the Packer way um, to me is just sort of a draft and develop, um, extend your core performers from within. Um, and, and again, it's about, it's about honesty, respect, and treating people the right way. Do you feel like with the transfer portal, are more reps and more scheme exposure, is that a net benefit? Or like, how are you kind of interpreting all the quarterbacks that are coming out now under these new... In terms of quarterback specifically, um, I don't know that I would say it's a benefit or a hindrance. Like I think every every person, every situation is different. Um, I think there's something to be said for somebody that's grown and developed in the same scheme for four years or five years. And I also think you know there's something to be said for someone who has had those different exposures and has had to deal with that adversity of changing schemes and changing staff. So I think I think it's an individual based answer. Thank you, Elliot. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Okay, let's get to the local portion of the back and forth with Elliot Wolf. And you'll hear me ask a question towards the end of the conversation about whether or not it's a good idea to drop a young quarterback into a roster loaded with holes. And what you'll hear is an optimistic, let's put it that way, an optimistic Elliot Wolf that they will be able to not only patch up those holes, but address those openings on the roster with overly qualified players. And you're going to hear him again towards the end, Karen Gregian, ask him about what he views as a successful season. He's not going to rule out the postseason. I, I think he's going to be realistic in the answer that you hear. But it sounds as though he doesn't want to put a ceiling on what this team might be capable of either. So a lot of, again, really interesting stuff. I, I know, I understand if you're a Patriots fan, uh, there are times under Bill Belichick where it, it felt like it was a low bar in terms of, what you would come away with from a press conference and, and what might be interesting to you and what might have a little bit of meat in terms of the answers that you were being provided. I mean, hell, we're at the Combine right now. I can't tell you the last time Bill Belichick had a media availability period at the Combine at a podium, and it's not required. And so he wasn't, you know, no rules broken or anything along those lines. But, you know, that alone, again, low bar for the Patriots to clear here. So just by meeting with us and providing us with a little bit of information, um, hopefully is something that you all as Patriots fans consider beneficial. So here's the back and forth with the local crowd. We'll be right back uh, once Elliot wraps up. What have you learned um, in about how that played out? How is that shaping your approach? This yeah, around. I think the main thing is just trying to do everything we can to support that person once they get in the building. Uh, you know, we're going to make the, the best decision we can in terms of, in terms of, who that person is if we decide to go part back and bring and but really just putting every resource and everything we have in turn in, into that person to support them and, and make sure that they're the best version of themselves do you guys plan on meeting with caleb drake and Jaden this week yes what, what, is, what is your philosophy when it comes to hey we could draft you know the best player available at three compared to we could also trade down and get more assets to fill you know more roster spots how do you sort of you know go through that in your head yeah, I think I think it's it's kind of determining you know how you have the players rated and also you know if any trade offers come in. Um, like I said, we're we're going to be open to anything. We're going to try to do its best for the team. There, that that could manifest itself in a lot of different ways. 
a lot of the guys uh, have opted not to work out here that are going to be at the top of the draft. How much is that involved? It doesn't. I mean, you, we wish they would, but at the end of the day, they're going to do what, you know what what they think is best for them, and I certainly respect that. And we'll be able to see them at a certain point somewhere else. Where are your GPS times, like in game tracking and stuff like that, with a guy like Marvin, for example, who's not going to run? Does that sort of become a, a bigger factor in those things? I think it's. I mean, the GPS time is is a GPS time. I mean, usually you're only hit 22 if something really good happens or something really bad happens. So. Um, it's really more about watching the game film and watching them play to play and seeing, you know, because there's, there's time speed and there's play speed and, you know, there's plenty of players that have one and not the other. Where are you guys at with J.C. Jackson as far as, like, you know, big cap hit? Um, most people think that you'll release him. Are you working with him on maybe reducing his... Yeah, we're, we, I would say we haven't come to a decision on that and we're kind of working through different options. I haven't, I haven't talked to the defensive staff about that one specifically yet, so... Ellie, you, you, talk, you talked about uh, selling free agents on the culture and what you guys bring to the table. Has the culture changed with Gerard taking taking over and a whole new set of coaches and, and running things? Yeah, I would say I would like to say yes, and I think the answer is ultimately going to be yes. It's it's easy to say the culture's changed, but you know there's no players here right now, so we'll see if the culture's changed. But but certainly there's there's more of an open kind of uh, less hard ass type vibe in the building that that we can you know that we can kind of move forward with. Is there is there a definition for the culture that you guys are shooting for? No, again, I think it's about people and developing people. Um, it's about doing the right thing, being honest and open, and, and and people feeling comfortable enough if there's an issue to to say something. Do you feel like you've had productive conversations with Kyle's agent and Mike in free agency? I know uh, we've had we've had conversations. Um, I'll, I'll keep whether they're productive or not to myself. Yeah. Could you sort of give us a breakdown of the guys that have come on that you're familiar with? You know, Alex, um, Ben, Alonzo. I don't know. If you, I think you were with Jerry and Green Bay. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, and, and I think it's important to note, other than Alonzo, like this is Gerard's staff. Um, Gerard hired these guys. Matt Groh and I and, and plenty of other people in the building were, were able to provide him with some names of people that maybe it was important to talk to. Um, but but the, at the end of the day, Gerard, you know, hired who he thought was best. And the fact that I have worked with a couple of these guys previously is just kind of a bonus for me because I kind of know what to expect rather than just getting to know everybody uh, from, from ground zero. Um, Alex is, is a great person. He's a great leader. Um, I thought he showed a tremendous amount of growth from his time in Green Bay to, to you know, when he interviewed with us, it was kind of like, wow, like this guy like really got the big picture. Um, so I'm excited to work with him again. And, you know, McAdoo has a lot of experience in a lot of different roles offensively, as well as being a head coach, which is helpful to Gerard. You know, he can, he has a big picture view of everything. Um, and then Alonzo is, is one of the most unique people in personnel. Um, he's an old school area scout that was the third pick in the draft. So he provides a lot of unique perspective uh both to the scouting staff this is his you know 25th year so probably more than that 30th year or so um and and also his ability to talk to players is have, having kind of been a you know top five pick that got hurt and you know didn't really make it the way he thought he would uh he, his his word carries a lot of weight with the players as well what type of role will, Al will Alex and Ben play when it comes to evaluating quarterbacks and some of these offensive prospects? Yeah, I think I think the coaching staff at every position is going to play a big role. Um, we don't want to we don't want to force players on them that they don't like. Um, so, really, just determining who we can get and who we who we can put together to to kind of envision the roster, um, both Demarcus and Alex, and obviously. Uh, Gerard has empowered them to do that. Both DeMarcus and Alex are really opening open to, we have a scheme, but we're going to tailor that scheme to the players that we have to put ourselves in the best position. Elliot, is it a good idea to drop a young quarterback onto a roster that seems to have some holes and it might be a difficult situation for that player to start? Would you be okay putting a young quarterback into a situation like that where there could be some adversity right away? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, again, I think it depends on who we're talking about and, you know, what holes we end up having. Um, there's a lot of time between now and the start of the season to to patch patch those holes in. Um, 
and hopefully we'll do more than patch them. We're going to try to get the best players that we can, and we'll we'll see what happens at the quarterback position as well. I think really just showing showing good progress and and turning the culture around and competing for the playoffs is is something that we're we're not going to shy away from. Progress, progress. That's that's really it. Sounds like what Elliot Wolf, Gerard Mayo, and this new Patriots regime are looking for first and foremost. That starts in free agency, which in some ways starts here. Patriots meeting with agents, laying the groundwork for potential deals with their own players. They're technically, technically not allowed to talk about players from other teams. But of course, agents have a variety of different players, you know, whether it's Kyle's, Kyle Duggar's representation or anybody else, you know, pick your uh, Patriots free agent to be come next month. Hunter Henry, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These agents represent all sorts of different guys. And so are other players spoken about? Do front offices talk with each other about their own players? Of course, that kind of thing happens here. So the, the groundwork for free agency set here in Indy. Obviously, the draft, it's key for the draft as well for uh, leadership for all of these teams. But for New England in particular, Elliot Wolf, Gerard Mayo, uh, Mac Rowe. Elliot Wolf was sure to continue to point out Mac Rowe and his importance to the front front office. You know, these these guys will have an opportunity to meet with, talk to some of these players, and especially the quarterbacks. You, you might be able to get a sense for you know, what they're like in the room, how they interact as human beings. That kind of thing matters at that position where you are the face of the franchise, uh, like it or not. So uh, a lot of interesting stuff from Elliot Wolf. We appreciate him um, being at the podium, hanging out with us for a few minutes after the fact, the local crowd, uh, so that we can spin this around and get it back to you all back at home we will have a ton more content from the combine here all sorts of interviews all sorts of written content on nbcsportsboston.com of course hopefully you're watching our shows early edition boston sports tonight as well we will keep you in the loop as best we can for the remainder of the week out here in indianapolis we'll talk to you soon